hydroponic, aeroponic growing on the power system. Right now we just have been going around the room discussing who's gardened or hasn't gardened before. So we've got some people who have never gardened, we've got some people who have dabbled in gardening, gardening and maybe just done some herbs or collards. We've got some people in the room who are growing pumpkins, which is fun. Um, everybody here who's gardened so far has gardened in traditional soil, um, outdoors in the ground. And we were just going to share our stories about how we've tried to garden and how we got introduced to the tower. So I'm going to let Celine introduce herself and tell her a little bit about her story. So I'm Celine Perot. It's kind of funny. I'm a nurse, but we're going to be talking about gardening today. <laughs> and I actually got introduced to the tower garden because I've been with a company that owns tower garden called the Juice Plus Company. So I was working for them as a nurse doing nutrition. And then I heard our company was coming out with a tower garden. I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, I don't garden. I don't even have one house plant in my house. Mm -hmm. And so when my kids heard that we're going to be getting this, my son, and I know Dr. Christie always laughs, my son's like, this is going to be the biggest waste of time because I'm the mother who killed every science fair project and we had to fudge everything because I killed all mm -hmm. the plants. So I got pretty much chosen as a tester for this technology because they wanted somebody who'd never gardened before to see how somebody completely starting out at ground zero with a black thumb could grow on a tower. And I've been very successful. I've been growing on them for nine years. So I actually got to grow on a tower before they were actually available for the public. And so our family, we had a boy tower in our house <coughs> and a girl tower. So the boys grew on one and the girls grew on another. And we'd have competitions. And it's really neat because the technology, mm -hmm. like she said, there's no dirt. So you're not growing in any dirt. And you're actually, there's a fluid in the bottom of the tower. We're gonna be showing a video to explain the technology a little bit, but there's no weeding. So you're talking about all your weeds no weeding. Mm -hmm. We do get bugs, but 90% less bugs. And the tower garden grows on only 10% of the water as you would do in the ground. So in Florida, with the ground being so full of sand, it's really hard for people to grow and people get really frustrated because a lot of times the bugs will eat up everything that they have. But I love this technology because not only can you grow without dirt and you don't have all the trouble and you don't have to get dirty, <laughs> but you actually grow nutrient dense food in the tower. And that's one of the big things, because most of the people that I do business with and in the, in the Juice Plus company, we're all into nutrition. So one of the biggest worries was, okay, if you're growing on a tower, is the nutrition there? And they actually did a study, can I talk about the University of Mississippi study? Yeah. The University right of Mississippi here. has a number one botany um, department in all of the nation. So they took kale and they made the best organic soil mm -hmm. they could make, and they planted kale in the soil. And then they did a study and they planted the same kale in the tower garden without the dirt. And they compared the nutrition between the two. And the tower actually produced 30% more kale than the best organic soil. And it was as nutrient dense, dense, if not more than the stuff that would grow in the ground. So that's really, really neat. And we were talking a little bit about the technology. If you've been to Epcot here at Disney, you'll see them all over the place because the um, Tim Blank was the person who invented it. He was a chief horticulturist of the botany program there called The Land. And he actually, with NASA, developed what they call aeroponic growing. So it's growing roots in air. So what you'll see um, in the tower, there's fluid in the bottom, and you'll hear it come on every 15 minutes. There's a little pump inside that pumps the fluid, and there's like a little shower, and it showers the roots with water, but they don't grow in water like hydroponics. So the roots actually grow in air, so they get the oxygen and they get really strong. And that's why the plants in the tower garden are so healthy. It's because they have the nutrients and they actually grow in oxygen, which is called aeroponic growing. So that's kind of my story. What's your story concerning the my tower story? garden? Well, I'm Italian, so I grew up in a traditional Italian family and my grandpa had acres of gardens. Like he had enough garden to feed not only our family, but most of the town of Seneca Falls and everybody <laughs> came over and would help and weed, you know, like you're talking about the weeding and help water and plant, like everybody had their little like plot and they would all help each other and then come and harvest. And um, we just saw how much work he went through and so, as my grandparents got older and you know stopped doing the gardening and our family started taking over from I was like we've got to keep this tradition up like this is amazing that we've grown up with organic fresh produce and we had like freezer chests and standing freezers full of stuff that we would you know I don't know what you call it, parboil and freeze we had 
rows and rows of canned goods like cherries and peaches. We did our tomato puree. So in September up in New York at this time of year, we'd harvest all the tomatoes. My grandpa had a huge outdoor fire pit and we'd stew the tomatoes outside. And my grandma would fill all the <coughs> mason jars with the basil and the garlic and salt and ahead of time. And he had this contraption with his drill that would seed it and everything. Like it was mass produced outside and the whole family would come and be a part of this like tomato harvesting festival. And we had fresh tomato sauce all year round. Well, they're not doing it anymore. And so we're, we're like, we need a garden. But I mean, if I had a garden, if I did the traditional garden, it would just be so pathetic. Like it'd be dead, like it'd be, I don't know, abandoned. You know, the weeds would take over, it'd be crusty. And I couldn't, we just know we couldn't keep up with it. We've talked about it for years. We've done some like potted gardens and herb stuff like on our patio and whatever, and that was all good. And I really didn't get into gardening until we got this. And now I like feel bad almost for my grandparents and all the <laughs> years that they did it because we've got this like magic like within a month. This is actually a little over the, a four weeks worth of seedlings. Oh, so okay. four weeks ago we put the little baby seedlings in and pow, it's like magic. You can't do this thing wrong. So I kind of feel bad for grandpa that he went through all that, but um, I'm happy to be able to have a garden I'm a, I am Dr. Christy, for those of you who don't know me, so I'm a chiropractor and a clinical nutritionist. And one thing that we test our patients for is food sensitivities. And we're always telling people, like, you've got to get off of pesticides, you've got to eat more, you know, fresh produce. And one of the, like, complaints we get back is, like, I can't afford organic. I can't keep up with all this stuff. I can't feed my family on organic. So I'm always a problem solver, and I just felt obligated to find a solution for our patients to find not only an affordable way, but a sustainable and organic, nutritious way for them to be able to produce their own food. And I do think the power is a big natural, like, fill-in for that kind of a thing. So that's why we have one in our office, we have one at home, we're growing on them like crazy, and right now we're just trying to grow anything we can in it to see what we've got. So at home, um, we've got a whole herb <coughs> garden at home. We'll pass some of the herbs around so you can see how fresh they are. I think that's one of the big questions, like, oh, if it's not in dirt, does it taste like watered down? The flavor is amazing on this stuff. Like, the herbs are so fresh and pungent when you put it in food. So we've grown, oh gosh, basil, parsley, dill, tarragon, lavender. We've grown chives. Um, all sorts of different herbs. Parsley. I'm the par parsley, parsley pusher in my yeah. neighborhood. Yeah, parsley, I get so many parsley. parsley. I want parsley, please. Yeah. You know, you we like had so much basil that oh, yeah. we had to freeze it. Like I made <laughs> little um, pesto ice cubes, and I just pop out a couple ice cubes for recipes. You know, it's awesome. Um, so there, I'm kind of doing my own freezing, not to the level my grandparents did. But you know, all your major like tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers squash we have this squash so it's like we'll show you a net pot is what fits in one of the little holes in the tower and that's what your seedling goes in and we'll show you some of this um it comes with all of your supplies so this is a rock wool is what you put the seed in if you decide to start by seeds so some people will start with seeds and you get the, you can come up and see but these are all the seeds that come with the kit you can start the seeds in here, and then once they get, uh, you know, a substantial growth, that rock wool goes in the nut pot, and then you get a plant, and that plugs into the tower so it gets watered. Um, that's the lavender. I can so smell lavender. Yeah, yeah we'll you smell can it. pass that oh, one around. See, like, I was like, I know there's lavender. But it's really neat. So the only reason why there's rock wool is just to hold the seeds and has something for them to hold into. Yeah. And you're welcome to, like, just crunch it so you get the smell on your hands it's and everything like, to see how strong it is. Well, I'll yeah. smell it. But the coolest yeah. thing is that <laughs> tiny it's little thing, fun. we grew like a huge squash plant on our deck and it was coming mm -hmm. off the tower and like came out to here. And we no, got no, over no, 13 no, zucchinis no. off of this one tiny little seedling. And I was mm -hmm. just like, that's amazing. So when we got rid of it, we had to like chop mm -hmm. the root system off to even like unplug that thing. So the yield is really high. Do you have like stats or numbers on how much yield you well, it's get? It's 30% more than when you're going to ground. But yeah. I will tell you, abundance is the issue with this. It's like you just have to figure out what to do with the extra. So like my neighbors, yeah. I get on Facebook, who needs parsley? Who needs basil? You know, yeah. because you'll, you like you can, like you said, you could freeze it. 
but um, tomatoes, my friend, had an unbelievable crop. Mm -hmm. She lives up in Michigan mm -hmm. of tomatoes. I mean, they're huge. So she was making salsa, so just figuring out ways. But I will tell you, once you start eating produce off a tower, you're extremely spoiled. My kids now have a, two 18-year-olds and a 15-year-old. They don't want to buy, they don't want to eat store-bought lettuce anymore because it's so fresh. So my daughter, we always give her a colander, send her out with some shears, and she goes and cuts our lettuce for the dinner, you know, for our dinner, our tomatoes, our cucumbers right off the tower. And we had a little girl in our neighborhood who's four, and my cucumbers are disappearing. She would come over my house, play in my yard, and pick cucumbers off the tower and had them hidden underneath her bed at home. So it's, it's like it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, where is it? I mean, I was like, my kids every night, I was telling them, they run out to see how big the cucumbers are, and they pretty much grow about an inch per night. I mean, they really grow fast. And all of a sudden, all the cucumbers are gone, and I figure out this four-year-old down the street yeah. eating all my cucumbers. <laughs> but the fun thing is about the tower is kids actually get involved in the growing. And this is good for elderly people, too, because they don't have to bend over, you know, in the yard. There's no mm -hmm. tools. I mean, all you do is you have this technology in this tower, and you plug it in, and it comes off and on every 15 minutes. So it goes on for 15 minutes, the pump runs, and it goes off. Mm -hmm. So it, I'll yeah. plug it back in. Thank you. Any questions so far about the tower? So does this thing stay inside? So you can grow them outside or inside. So I grow mine always outside. She's growing one at her house. She grows it outside and, and she grows one inside. So my friends that live in Michigan, um, yeah, it's Taco snowing Taco outside. Taco. And they, you, it's so cool to see on Facebook. They'll have their tower yeah. in front of the window and there's snow yeah. and they're growing their lettuce mm -hmm. and all their stuff inside. Yeah. So they grow year round. In Florida here, you can grow year round outside on your tower. Mm -hmm. So when it gets to a point where it's, you know, the few days we have that are freezing, um, there's not much you have to do for the tower. But what I do is, if it's freezing during the night, I just turn it on all night long. And just the circulation mm -hmm. keeps it warmer. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'll wrap a sheet around it. But people tell me they don't wrap theirs and theirs are just fine. So I've never had plants die because of the cold. Right. You know, and it's pretty, like I said, when it comes to pests, I mean, during the summertime is the worst time. But there's organic um, pest control. We have a tower garden page where you can get on there. It's a blog and you can read what people are doing. It's a support group and you'll see people mix garlic. I mean, they all make their own I use pesticides. Neem. And neem oil. Mm -hmm. right. It works really pretty good. good. Yeah, it does. It around. It's yeah. We're so, a little thing of corn What's corn. really cool is I know the, own, the guy who invented it. I met him and we were talking. <coughs> he said, if you take your tower garden and you put it in your, in your yard and you put white rock around it, mm -hmm. it pretty Sorry. much gets rid of all the flying insects because the reflection off the rock from the sun the glare, I guess they don't like it. I'm like, why? Why did I think of that? But yeah, so. Yes, this one. Just yes, pass the herbs around. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you can't get through when you do the live So screen. what can you grow in a tower? You can grow anything in the tower except for root vegetables and bushes. Okay? So everything else, you're not going to grow carrots in the tower. You can grow celery. Unbelievable celery. That's not a root. People think it's a root. But you can grow celery. You can grow tomatoes. Anything you can think. Eggplant. Anything that's not a bush. So you're not going to grow, you can grow strawberries, you're not going to grow blackberries because of the bush. How so does the, if yeah, it's a vining, do you let the vine grow out? You have a choice. Yeah, there is, um, this is called a tomato cage. You right here, so the vines, you can wrap them around the tomato cage. That's a lot of people do. I've seen other people, and again, I'm not a gardener, but I see whatever else did. They, they take it and they put it down a trellis down the side, and so they have this tomato plant. But, you're talking about growing pumpkins. Yeah. So grow a 50 pound pumpkin off of their tower. Because oh it just goes to the ground and then they grow. Uh -huh. and so you can grow, I grew watermelons. Done there with kids. Yeah, you have to do. Try yeah, everything you can pick up. But yeah, and yeah. I tell people, concentrate on what you're going to eat. The squash plants, they get huge. Like my kale plant was like this big around. So the plants will get big and you just need to really cut and eat as much as you can, which is such an awesome problem. I think one tower for three people in a household is enough. A lot of families go to two and three towers because, like, my kids, we wanted one tower for strawberries, and then we did one tower for vegetables, and we mixed it up a little bit. Any other questions so, so far? Does it, does it need to be in sunlight? So, great question. So, if your tower is growing outside, you need at least around six hours of sunlight. Yeah. So, during the summertime, I put my tower in a place where it's going to get that sunlight. Then it's gonna get some shade during the day. And then so the lights don't come on though, right? Uh, if you you have wouldn't have any lights if you had it outside. Okay, I was like confused no by lights what the lights are. Outside. Outside. <laughs> like, lights are only for if it's inside. Okay, that's nice. Or if somebody wants it, like let's say you want it on your porch and your porch doesn't get any sunlight, then I would suggest you put grow lights on it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? We have some people who live in condos, like uh, on the right. river and stuff, and they have a little outdoor area, but it's not always in the sun, so mm -hmm. they have it outdoors. The grow lights are like extension kit that you can get for it. If you want your, your neighbor.
neighbors will start talking about you. Yeah. Put a tower guy out there with grill lights, and everybody's wondering what you're doing over at your house. And you have to tell everybody, no, I'm not growing what you think I'm growing. <laughs> fruits and vegetables. It's kind of one of those things. But yeah, when people see that glow, it kind of looks suspicious. Do you have to test the water? Yeah, uh, so in the water, I um, the yep, so in, well, I was going to, we were going to show you a video, but I think I'm just going to kind of start teaching this stuff because it's pretty much easier. There, this is what they call the tower tonic. Tim Blank invented this. This is what makes this technology so unique, is these are earth minerals, okay? So it's the same kind of minerals that if you were to put a plant in the ground, the roots go searching for the minerals in the ground. Mm -hmm. What's so cool in the tower ground, they don't have to go searching because they're bathed in those minerals. And so these minerals are, you don't ever have to change them. You put so it gives you a measurement. So every time you fill up the tank, you're gonna put in so many cc's of this, it comes with a measuring, and you put your tower garden A and tower garden B tonic in there. And then you test the pH. My pH stays pretty much the same all the time. So if you're on well water, you'll kind of know what your water is gonna be. Every once in a while, you have to change the pH. So just like you check a pool, technically you'll mm -hmm. check it every two weeks. If it needs to have a little change, you have these to change it. You have your acid in your base, and based on where your pH, you'll know where to put it. And like I said, once you get to know your water, you kind of know, like mine's usually, you kind of want it around the pH of six and it tells you that. So, and I've noticed, it's amazing. If you keep it at six, grows like nuts. All of a sudden, if it creeps up to seven, you'll notice it doesn't grow as fast or it doesn't look as green and you'll kind of see those kind of things. The plants will tell you, like if yeah. they're wilty or yellowy or, you know, something. Yeah, something okay. happens and one of your kids unplugs your tower garden by accident and it's like this <laughs> when you get home and you panic, all you do is plug it back in and within a couple hours it's perked back up again. So, so how many hours can it go without electricity before the roots take yeah. I've noticed my tower, I mean, it's gone a day without electricity and it's droopy and then it comes back. Okay. I think it depends on the plants because some plants don't come back as well as others, but you know, your hopes would be not for it not to go without electricity because it kind of needs it. There's people who run them on solar power because they want to go off grid and do that mm -hmm. kind of thing, but I have no idea how to do that. But um, yeah, we just mm -hmm. plug ours in on our porch. But every once in a blue moon, it trips our GFI in our new house. And it's happened twice since we've lived there in three years. And then I just turn it back on. And then, so that's the nutrients. So you're gonna put the nutrients <laughs> in. And what I do is I keep a bucket on my porch and I just mix the nutrients in the water. So every time it gets low, you don't have to keep measuring, you just dump in there. So you know exactly what the amount of nutrients is in the water. And then during the summertime, we actually put in half the nutrients because it's so hot here and the evaporation evaporates the water off so you don't need as many nutrients as you do during the fall of the year. And what I love about, if you were ever to look at the hydroponics, people have to change the solution to hydroponics according to if it's flowering or whatever the plant's doing. You don't on the tower. It's the same nutrients all the time, no matter how old the plant is. If it's flowering, it's fruiting, it's the same nutrients for every single plant that there is. So it's all the same nutrients for the tomatoes, the cucumbers, everything. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay, you guys are an easy audience. Mm -hmm. So right now you can hear it's on. So when you, we'll let you guys come up and look at the um, top of this, but you'll see where the water. It's so simple because the only mechanism inside of here that's a pump is a pump that's nineteen dollars. So when people ask me what has to be replaced on the tower, that's it. It's a nineteen dollar pump in there. And I have abused my pump, it's run out of water, it's done everything in mine has lasted years and years and years. So it's not an expense. And then the only things you ever have to buy are your seeds. Your seeds you can buy from anywhere. So if you're in love with a certain organic seeds that are GMO free and it's any seeds going to tower. It's the same seeds as you plant in your garden. Our company just happens to give you seeds just to get you started, but these aren't special tower garden seeds. Okay? But they are organic. Yes, so everything we do, I mean, that's, GMO. right, we do organic, non-GMO, mm -hmm. and that's what's so cool about this is that you can grow and you know it's in your food, because how many of us get nervous about what we see on the news mm -hmm. when there's listeria and cantaloupe and all that kind of stuff? I love the fact that we can grow our own food, and one thing that a lot of people don't realize is our, the nutrients in our food has slowly decreased over the years, so one cup of spinach you know, back in the 1960s, they say it takes, I've heard different things, four to six cups of spinach now because the nutrient density isn't there. This is something you get to control at your house. The nutrient density is very there because it's not like, you know, farmers have to take their soil and they have to re you know, put nutrients back in it. Here, your plants are getting the same nutrients all the time. 
and that's really important. So the soil never <coughs> goes in your tower garden. Okay. And then, so this is the rock wall. And what you do is there's a kit that comes with it, a seedling kit. I don't know. That's okay. So what you do, there's like a little, it looks like a Tupperware kind of okay. tray. And you put these in there and you put your seeds in there. And then it tells you how to water it with a solution. And then all of a sudden, within about less than two weeks, your seedlings will pop up. And when they're about an inch tall, can I break this? Yeah. You just break off the square and you stick it in here and then you pop it into the tower. So you plant your garden in like five minutes. We have a video on there. It's called rock we have volcanic video. ash. Oh, okay. You can pass that around if you want to. Gosh, and what I like is you can, get, you can plant a garden in your heels. You don't get dirty. I did that. I had my <laughs> church dress on. On our Facebook page, we have a tower garden album. You can go on after and look it up. But I had my church dress on and I went out there and planted like 20 seedlings like yep. in five seconds. I'm like, oh, hot day in the garden! <laughs> She's 15. She can run a tower completely by herself, and this is something she's learning for her life. And my kids eat things they would never eat if they didn't grow. I mean, most kids don't know about kale and Swiss chard. Swiss chard is so beautiful on the tower. We oh, have one. one in there. It's on the other oh, side. So yeah, we'll, it's like you'll rainbow. You'll be able to around it when we break out. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I plant rainbow Swiss chard. It looks like this big crown on top of the tower, and the leaves get like this big, and they're beautiful. I mean, they're just so pretty. So yeah, so for maintenance, like we talked about, you gotta keep up with the nutrients, keep up with the pH once every two weeks, okay? And then obviously the only other thing you need to do is to clean your tower, which is pretty much easy. What I love about, so this is very high grade food plastic, meaning that this does not leach into your food. The big thing about other plastics, people have to worry about it leaching into your food and different chemicals. This is made to last for up teen years, years, 40, 50 years. It doesn't get brittle like other plastic does in the sun because this is UVA and UVB protected and it's not gonna turn yellow. Now sometimes, as you can see, if you look really close, you'll see a little bit of algae at the creases and that's what you have to clean off when you have your tower. So we, I take mine apart two, three times a year and it just comes apart like Tupperware. <laughs> I take it, put it in a base and then I put some vinegar in there and I go and scrub a little bit, leave it, soak it, put it back together. It takes five minutes to put together. And it's really easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other things you could I know, she's covering it all. It's that easy. I'm like, is there anything else? I'm like, huh? Let's show them that, show them that one video of the, um, okay. how it grows over four weeks. Yeah. Put your thing on. Okay. It is very easy. There's like a little bit of a learning curve. Like, but most people, if you garden before in the ground, then it's easy for you. I had to learn about neem oil and all those kind of things. When we have learning. some of the neem there, too. Yes, I saw that. The neem oil. We use neem, lavender, and rosemary for most of our pest control and just put it in a spray bottle. I have a sprayer over there that we can look at. Um, <coughs> but there's also, like, for worms, if you have, if you have are growing outside without a cage and you're going to get, like, worms and other stuff, there's a couple of really good organic pest controls that work. Um, and that's what she's saying. There's the um, Tower Garden Users Exchange. We all belong to it, and people are uploading pictures of what they're growing, or little bugs, or problems, and they're really, like, everybody will come with a community and answer your questions, so I just always go on there. And the one thing I've noticed is Tower Garden. You start showing more pictures of your Tower Garden than you do your children. I know! <laughs> like, look at this! I mean, like, look at these tomatoes! I was I mean, trying to figure out how to get it on a slideshow. Yeah, we're going to try to give you guys, guys slideshows of pictures, but... Just go on our Facebook page. We'll put it up there. Yeah, it's like, go to our Facebook page. Just Which one did you want? The Watch It Grow. So this is just a four week, week time lapse of the tower garden. It's worth to do it in like 30 seconds to show you how fast it grows. It's not like a chia pet one of those commercials. Mm -hmm. So that's week one. <laughs> so so incredible. <laughs> and you'll see it. You've got Same squash. squash. Mm. So what's neat about the tower garden? Depending on what you grow, it takes about six to eight months to actually pay for your tower garden produce. So after your tower garden is paid for, what I love about this company is they let you pay for it on a monthly basis. If you pay for it monthly, the produce you're going to get is easily going to pay for that. Because I think about lettuce. I mean, we, we grow a ton of lettuce. 
in the fall time of year. This is my exciting time to grow lettuce, all different kinds. But we are going through, I mean, those little tubs that cost $5 of organic lettuce, we go through it one sitting in our house because I have five people in my family. So if you add up everything that you're doing in your tower, that you buy at the store and you start doing that in your tower, you will save money. Once your tower garden's paid off, your produce, the rest of your life is free. That's what people don't understand. That's organic produce. Because if you've ever bought an organic cucumber, I mean, they're four bucks. Mm -hmm. And on your tower, you're going to have more cucumbers than you know what to do with. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where the cost savings is, is that you grow your own food. Guess how much that whole thing costs to grow? That's been idea? five bucks. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're like a dollar a seedling. So it's like $24 for all that. And you'll walk around like we've got tomatoes, peppers, kale. <coughs> egg, there's an eggplant growing off of there. So that's $24, and then you, that stuff will grow itself back, and you'll get, like she said, bushels of peppers and tomatoes. So the yield is a lot higher. I thought that was interesting, like planning for, the website can help you too if you're planting for a family of two or four or six or whatever, how many, like planning of how many each plant to plant. So like, I just remember my grandpa's garden, and he had to get like rows of tomatoes and rows of peppers and everything to get what we needed for the season. I mean, you literally, for us, might grow like two tomato plants. It's like, we had two tomatoes and we couldn't keep, like she said, you're trying to figure out like, okay, what's another tomato recipe? The same with the zucchinis. Like, what else can I put zucchini in? So you get so much out of one or two plants. The lettuce is, if you eat it every day, you definitely want to grow yeah, and more. And you chop and you, you know, you go yeah. out and you cut your lettuce and it goes back. Yeah. And you can do that, like if you have a bib lettuce, you can, you, you can either harvest the whole head and use that, and then have another seedling to plug in. So my big tip when you're growing on a tower is have a tray of seedlings always ready. So you take out, you plug in. So there's no time waiting for produce, because you're always just plugging in. And the seedlings literally take two minutes to drop the seeds in there, water it, close the top, and you're ready to go. Yeah. We should have a little seedling tray. Maybe we'll grow yeah. seedlings in the office so you can see the seedling growing process. And if you want to cheat days. like I do sometimes, I'm in a hurry. I have a friend that has a tower garden facility down in Eustis. It's 4,000 square foot yeah. facility of tower garden that she grows seedlings and she ships them. <laughs> so <laughs> I get in the mail and I go, That's cut them out, you know, just take the little squares I showed you. I plant them. So my husband's like, Celine, or, you know, it says live plants in a box. And I'm like, yes, I'm cheating. Well, but that's what I was quoting. The $24 was for the seedlings oh, and the seedlings. shipping. Okay. Okay. If we didn't buy seed, I mean, like, these are the original seeds that came with it, and you can see how many are still left. Like, we grew a whole tower just off of the seeds when we got it, and we've got tons of seeds left Yeah. from our original purchase. So you can decide. So that would be, like, dollars. You would have been in the right ballpark if we did it by the seeds. Right. Yeah. So you were talking about ordering I seedlings. had ordered seedlings and paid for the shipping. Yeah, it's too nice to go online. And you just click, yeah, I want two tomato seedlings. I want two strawberries. You know, you kind of get through there. I spent fifty-four dollars mm. yesterday just in the produce section. Right, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Fun. Any other questions? What's your favorite? Out? What's your if you ha what would you grow in it if you had it? What would be your first thing? Mine. Yeah. yeah. Probably cucum cucumbers and yeah. tomatoes because my parents a lot of that. They have their own greenhouse, so I'd sell a deep fat. Yeah. Yeah. We and were making tomato cucumber salads with ours and with the basil in it. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. so good. Crazy mm -hmm. salads. What would you grow? Oh, I would probably grow a little bit, a little bit of everything. I know. <laughs> That's my approach, too. I'm like, what else can I grow in here? This is, it is. so awesome. It's fun. I mean, there's the, I grow things, yeah. but I, I, mean, I never really ate eggplant until I grew it on the tower. Yeah. I did this Japanese eggplant, and then I had some naive. I'm like, what do you do? And then they said, make a vegetable lasagna with it. Okay. Uh -huh. You know, so we have learned to do different things. Yeah. Ratatouille. Yeah, ratatouille. Yeah, so, yeah. What would you good. grow? I would be a little bit of everything. That's mm -hmm. what I do now. Yeah. Right. You know, I tell people herbs are so, it, they're so cost effective if you grow them on your tower because at Publix it is so expensive. Every time you need a sprig of rosemary, you have to buy that packet and they go bad. Yeah, so they here you just cut what you want and then you leave the rest of it on there alive. Yeah. How much do you think? Uh, zucchini mm -hmm. and squash. They take over. We have, um, that's one thing that I'm finding is growing better outside, on our outside tower is our zucchini and squash. And they are just naturally climbing up the cage. And their little, I don't know, is it vines? Are yes. wrapping around everything yes. and holding on. They're fun. 
Yeah. We are actually on the outside when we do. I just looked today. Like you said, it's so fun to run out there and see like what's growing. So I'll show you. Our squash here is about to produce because we've got some flowers on it after four weeks. But on our outdoor one, we've actually got some like the very first part of some zucchini and squash. Those will be, you'll get more than you could ever wish for. And Don't one. plant more than one or two. Yes, because that will, it, yeah, cause it will suck up a lot of the liquid inside the tower. So if you do too yeah. many. One thing that I, I didn't know about was pollination. I was about to say, even though it's inside, it's, we still get Well, she's got, well, she'll have to <laughs> pollinate, yeah. Okay, that's so, what I was wondering. I had no, I told you, I had no gardening experience. So I had all these little micro looking squash and they were like spongy and they weren't. So I called my friend who owns a greenhouse. She's like, and she's like, late 60s, she's so funny, she's like, your squash are not having sex. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we had about just go get a Q-tip. So she taught me how to locate the male flower. As soon as I pollinated, it was like squash like crazy. So I had no idea and I wouldn't have known, but I did not realize squash have to pollinate. Right. So mm -hmm. if you don't have a lot of bees and you don't see it, you will have to be the, the person like I was going mm -hmm. around pollinating. But I automatically just pollinate now because there's just not that many bees at my house. So I just pollinate and I have no problems. But you'll kind of notice, I think cucumbers will have to be pollinated also. I don't know, We've, yeah. we have ours in a screen and we had enough like little tiny oh, bugs so that didn't have to pollinate. Okay. we didn't have to pollinate a thing. Okay, that's nice. It's still in, it's in the screen and there's still just little tiny little things, bugs flying around enough to do it. Okay, there you go. I don't know. You haven't found her house. Yeah. Our plants have sex. Our plants are having sex in our house. Yeah, we're our plants to your house. Yeah, party. Party house. So what would you grow if you could grow? Oh, everything. Everything? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I do now. You just grow everything. Okay. Yeah. How about you? I think I'd grow everything. Kale and spinach. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Kale is phenomenal. And there power. is kale. This is kale here. Yeah, I didn't realize there's so many varieties of kale, so I've grown them all. And it's so funny because I go to parties and I'll chop up my kale and make a kale salad and people like swear it's like the best kale salad ever because it is, it is so green. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so dark. Everything and you grow yourself is way better than the grocery store. It is so <laughs> It's amazing. It's amazing to compare. I mean, yeah, go look at the prices of kale in yeah. the store. Holy moly. I did a little taste test on my husband because it, you get excited like watching it and you're like, can we pick it yet? And I'm like, no, I think it'll turn a little darker. And they're like, no, I think it'll grow a little bit more. So I got, I had conventional tomatoes from Publix and then I had our tomatoes yes. off of the tower oh, and I cut good. them up and made caprese salad. And I'm like, here, and he guess which one is which? And he immediately said, oh, these are like too perfect and bright red. He's like, they must be the store bought ones, like doubting, you know, doubting it. So we went and tasted it, and he's like, well, this dark red one definitely tastes better. And I was like, oh, that's ours! <laughs> and he was shocked. Like, he definitely didn't think, you know, what we grew. So it was kind of fun. I grew, I've grew, and again, there's so many things you just, you, you start to experiment with your tower. But there are these pear-shaped tomatoes. Have you ever had those? No. <gasps> they to die for. They're like cherry tomatoes, but they're pear-shaped. They're yellow. They're yeah. incredible. Oh, you know what I'm talking awesome. about? Yeah. yeah. They are so incredible. So it's like, you get to yeah. grow, and you I don't know if you guys have seen the edible flowers. It's so much fun. So if you have mm -hmm. company coming over, you plant the edible flowers. Yeah. They're spicy. And you put them on your salad. It just it kicks it up a notch. But it's fun, like I said, for the family. Because when I put flowers in a salad, I'm like, it's cool for the kids. Yeah, you know? it's gourmet. Okay. How many pods are in one tower? As far 20. As 20. 20. So 20. 20 plants? There's 20 plants. Five tiers. Yep, there's five tiers. And you can order an extension kit for another eight plants. So on one tower ground with that pump, you can grow um, up to 28 plants. You just order an extension. Would it just be taller with yep. the extension? Yeah, taller. Taller. It'll be two, uh, two more sections. You can reach it. I can reach it. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's, it's only like to here. See, it'll come to here. It'll come up to there. I'm really short sure for those of you online that can't tell. It goes to here. Well, we have but people. We do pretty much everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, squash, tomatoes. Beans, beans. We yeah. did green, green beans. beans. Green, green, green beans fun. were fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. they grow fast. Cilantro. Yeah. Yeah, I got to find it up to do the cilantro. That was one of those things. I had too much. <laughs> had to throw I it away. Guacamole. Yeah. Guacamole. Um, people grow watermelon and like melons. You can grow your pumpkins on there. Mm -hmm. Find the list that up here on the on the strawberries. Pink. It's kind of hard to get a big yield of strawberries, but it's still fun. Yeah. We do some strawberries every now and then, but okay. you kind of need a whole tower. If you're going to do strawberries, just do one dedicated tower for strawberries. And they taste out of this world. Yeah. Out of this world. 
What about a green bean plant? Would you have to have a few of them to get a good yield? Yeah. Yeah, I did two. Yeah. I think you probably need a few a more. Couple. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say three if you're going to have a bigger okay. family. Yeah. But yeah, we had plenty of green beans and they were really good. We just need our pork and towers. Beans. We never even cooked our green beans. We didn't yeah. even pick them just and eat them. That's another <laughs> problem with the tower is like you never wait to cook it because you just go grab it and you're like, hmm, I wonder what this tastes like. <laughs> so we have three different varieties of cherry tomatoes growing now that we hadn't tried before. And one is like a black cherry tomato. Oh, yeah, so those are going to be, do you have cool. it? Yes. Those will be fun to just pop off and eat it. So can you imagine like kids, like it's hard enough to get them to eat veggies, but when they see this thing growing and they see it start from, you know, seedling and plugging it in, there's everybody on that tower and exchange is showing videos of their kids. And then they're excited and involved in the process and they're picking it off the thing, walking around <laughs> the patio eating, eating fresh fruits and veggies. I mean, that's how I grew up. My grandpa would cut off the cucumbers in the garden and he, he wouldn't even take them outside. We'd rinse them off outside and bring the salt shaker and he'd peel them for us and we'd eat cucumber sticks right on the, you know, right on the patio. We'd be eating peas out of the pods raw. We'd be picking the cherry tomatoes off the hanging baskets and just like scarfing them down. So I know when you grow up eating that stuff instead of the processed foods and the sugars and all the convenience foods, the kids will naturally choose that and not just in childhood, but for life. Like, yeah, and there's schools that are built, yeah. I mean, that all over town and all over the U.S. now that are yeah. growing tower gardens. So Boys and Girls Clubs, our company um, actually yeah. gives them free tower gardens. So, and if you go to New York, there's actually a restaurant and all the towers grow on top of the restaurant in New York City. Mm -hmm. And the um, chef goes up and harvests mm -hmm. all the tomatoes for the day and brings them downstairs. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing yeah. rooftop gardens throughout the, it gives me goosebumps yeah. even think of it. There's actually a school mm -hmm. here in town, I can't think of what school it is, but it's a special needs school. And the kids there have a food truck. I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. But they grow in towers, and everything they make, they sell in the food truck. Mm -hmm. So these kids are, you know, there are a lot of them Down syndrome, so they're learning to make organic produce and recipes, and then they make their money for their school selling off the food mm -hmm. truck. We so it's really neat. I can't think of the name. I don't know. know. The name but anyway, so it's a cool technology. Yeah. We're going to let you guys get up and kind of go look at the tower. Yeah, for sure. And then any questions that you have, let me know. I'm gonna we have an order form, too, so if you want to see how much different yeah, things cost in the tower. She's going to move it out so you can actually walk around the whole thing. Mike, will you unplug the My daughter's like, it's like a Christmas tree because everybody comes to my house and they just like stand and look at it. <laughs> it's more fun than a Christmas tree. So is it more beneficial to have it outside from the sun? It just depends on your situation. It's whatever works for you. I prefer to have mine outside just because so, it's, yeah. you know, I have a big patio so I like to grow outside. But, uh, you know, for my friends that live in Vermont and Michigan, can you imagine growing all your produce?